There are lots of things all around us, exciting things that surround us. But how does it work? Do you know? How is it made? Do you know? Things that go up, things that go down, things that go pop, things that go round with special cameras to show you in. Hello, I'm Maddie, and today I'm visiting a library. There are so many interesting things to look at in a library. I like looking through all the books. Thing is, when you're out visiting places all day, there comes a time when you need to use the toilet. When we've used the toilet, we need to wash our hands. First, we need a squirt of soap. Then a rinse. And wash. The last thing to do is dry them. Do you know what this is? That's right, it's a hand dryer. But do you know how a hand dryer works? Let's find out. How does it work? Hand dryer! I've come to a factory where lots of hand dryers are designed and tested. There are lots of different types of hand dryers, aren't there? There are some with a button to push and some that come on automatically. And that means when we put our hands underneath, the hand dryer will turn on without us even having to press a button, like this. Oh, it makes a great sound, doesn't it? It sounds like an aeroplane taking off. But how does the hand dryer know when our hands are underneath? And how does it turn on to blow the warm air out automatically? I think we need to take a closer look. Underneath the hand dryer is a sensor which shines a beam of light called infrared light. When we put our hands under the hand dryer, the light bounces back off our hands to another sensor. This tells the hand dryer our hands are underneath and it switches on. Inside the hand dryer is a motor powered by electricity. The motor spins a fan which sucks air from outside in through the vents underneath. As the air moves over a heating element, it's warmed up, and the warm air is pushed downwards very fast out through the vent at the bottom. When we first put our hands under, a blast of air blows a lot of water droplets away from our hands. Then the warm air heats up the water left on our hands, turning it to steam. As it turns to steam, it moves away from our hands. This is called evaporation, leaving our hands nice and dry. That's really clever, isn't it? Shall we take a look inside a hand dryer to see it working? Wow, look at that. Oh, and can you see the sensors? That's what turns the hand dryer on. Oh, shall we see the sensors working? It's working. The invisible infrared light has bounced off my hand to the sensor. When I put my hand underneath, the light turned red, and when I took it away, it turned blue again. Next, the inner cover has been taken off. Now we can see all of the parts inside the hand dryer, and this round bit is the motor. And when the hand dryer turns on, the motor spins a fan. And this is called the heating element. And if you look closely, you can see a silver wire that wraps around the heating element. That heats up. And when the air is blown past it, the air heats up too. And it helps to dry our hands really quickly. To show you just how quickly the heating element inside the hand dryer will heat the air up, I'm going to use my special camera. And this is a thermal camera. And it shows us how hot or cold things are. Can you 
see that at the moment the hand dryer is dark blue. That means that it's cold. Let's see how quickly the hand dryer warms up when I put my hands under the dryer. Ready? Oh, wow, look at that. Can you see the middle of the hand dryer where the heating element is bright white? That's because it's the hottest part of the hand dryer. The warm air helps to dry our hands really quickly, but most of the water on our hands is actually blown away at speeds of around 200 miles per hour. That's as fast as a race car going round a track. Let's see that in action through my special slow motion camera, which shows things slowed right down. Look at that! The air is so fast, it's blowing the water droplets away. It's even making the skin on my hands wobble. The skin's moving like jelly. And there we go. Clean and dry hands. I loved seeing how a hand dryer works. What was your favourite bit? Do you remember the part of the hand dryer that heats up the air? That's right, it's the heating element. Did you hear the sound the hand dryer made? It was like an aeroplane taking off. And did you see the water droplets being blown away on my special slow motion camera? It's really important to wash our hands and it's fun to dry them using a hand dryer. But what else is important that we need when we go to the toilet? That's right, toilet roll. <laughs> toilet roll comes on a tube that we can see through and it has lots and lots of toilet paper wrapped around it that we can tear off when we need to use it. But do you know how toilet roll is made? Let's find out. How is it made? Toilet rolls. Toilet rolls are made here in a ginormous toilet roll factory. Look at the size of these toilet rolls. I feel like I've shrunk. These huge rolls will be cut down to the size of toilet roll we use at home. And here they make two million of those every day. That's enough to fill 12 train carriages. Toilet roll, like this one, starts out at the factory like this. Huge packets of something called pulp. Pulp is a material that's made from wood that comes from trees. Pulp is used to make all sorts of paper, like newspaper birthday cards and paper towels and after it's been used it can be recycled back into pulp and used again so the next time you put some paper in the recycling bin it could end up as toilet roll to turn pulp into paper you need water lots and lots of it the packets of pulp are dropped with a loud splosh into this huge machine called the pulper. This is like a giant mixing bowl and inside there are some spinning blades that help to mix the dry pulp with all of this hot water. I've got my special camera with me on a really long pole so we can see everything that's happening inside the pulper a little bit closer. Here goes. is mixed into the water really quickly. I've been splashed! <laughs> Look at my goggles! The dry pulp and the water have mixed together and it looks a little bit like cottage cheese. I've got a bucket of wet pulp here. Oh! <laughs> that feels really squidgy and squelchy. 
the wet pulp is turned into paper in a massive machine called a paper mill. It's very big and very noisy. First, the watery pulp is sprayed onto a huge piece of fabric and that fabric carries the mixture through the paper mill. Lots of rollers squeeze the water from the wet paper and then it travels to this big spinning drum. And in there, the air is really hot. That heat heats up the paper until it's nice and dry. The dried paper is then wound around metal pipes, creating these enormous rolls. It looks like toilet paper for giants. The rolls are moved across to a machine called a converter. The converter's job is to turn these big rolls into smaller ones that we can use at home. And this part of the machine is called the unwinder. It's unwinding the toilet paper off the big metal pipe. But to make small toilet rolls, we need something to wind the paper onto. That's right. What are these? It's a cardboard tube. And the toilet roll tubes start out like this. It's a big reel of cardboard. A very thin layer of glue is rolled onto the cardboard strips here. And then it's wound onto a metal tube. And this is where it's stuck in place into the shape of a cardboard tube. The tubes are chopped into long pieces and then loaded onto the converter, where the long sheets of toilet paper are wound around them. As the paper is wound onto the cardboard tube, little holes called perforations are punched into the paper. Can you see the little holes there? They make it much easier to tear off squares of toilet paper when we use it at home. Oh, here one comes. And this is what the roll looks like now. But this is far too long. It's not going to fit in anyone's bathroom, is it? So the long rolls are brought here. This machine is the log saw, and inside there's a blade that will cut the toilet roll to the right side. The blade spins round very fast, cutting four toilet rolls at the same time. But just look at how many toilet rolls there are. All of this is on its way to packing. And here we have a finished pack of toilet rolls, ready to be sent to the shops for us to buy and use. I love seeing how toilet rolls were made. What was your favourite part? Do you remember what the material is called the toilet paper is made from? That's right, it's called pulp. Did you hear the sound of the pulp packets dropping into the pulp machine? And did you see the log saw as it sliced the long toilet rolls into the right size for us to use? The next time you dry your hands with a hand dryer, you'll know how it works. And when you go to the toilet, you'll know how the toilet paper was made. I'll see you next time. There are lots of things.